Well, welcome. We are so glad you're with us here for another TGIF. And I'm who? Tim. And you're? Gina. All right. And, and we are so glad to be here. it's Friday. Amen. Amen to that. And it's been a crazy kind of a week, huh? Yes. So I don't know if, if you've had the crazy week and sometimes it's hard to appreciate the day when you see ash falling mm -hmm. from the sky, your car is covered with ash, but our word of the day is appreciate. Two, four, six, eight. Who do we appreciate? You. That kind of appreciate? That's a good appreciation. It's like we're, we're looking at appreciation as it fits into our lives mm. each and every day. And I had the blessing to talk with Dottie this week. I had a great phone call with her. And she is 94 years old wow. and she is living every day to the fullest. And it's just, it's encouraging for me because she says she gets up every day and she just presses forward. And that's what we have to do. I can't imagine doing it for 94 years, but there's even something more incredible about her story. What's that? Her marriage to Frank. Mm -hmm was 70 years. Wow. We are having our which anniversary this next year? 30 in 30, March. The big 3-0 and I think that's an accomplishment. But when I think of 70 years and so I asked Dottie, it's like how do you do that? What are the secrets? You know because I always look for people that have had a long marriage and they're 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 happy and they're enjoying it and she said it was a give and take. Mm, you know I think yeah. that's one thing that we do really well, give and take. Doing TGIF, there's a little give and take here, a right? A lot of give and take. <laughs> and so in that though, what I heard her saying is how much she had to appreciate, they each had to appreciate each other. Mm -hmm. And she even said, my word of the day is appreciation. And so I think it's funny, she's watching us. And so thank you for tuning in. For all of you that are tuning in, yes. we appreciate you. We and do. I think that's one of the things that appreciation we're talking about today. Appreciating each other. Yes. Appreciating people around us. And appreciating the day, that's another big component that no matter how hard the day is, do we appreciate it? Or do we woke up, wake up and say, oh my gosh, mm -hmm. my car is covered with ash mm -hmm. and not think about the people that are in the midst of the fire. Mm -hmm. That's, you know, learning to appreciate people. And it's, it gives us this opportunity, right? Opportunity in the good and in the bad. Do we allow God in our lives, in both of those situations, Mm. And are we thankful? So it's it's an incredible opportunity if we look at it as opportunity to appreciate. And I think it's we're not saying appreciate the circumstances and appreciate the things that aren't working out or favorable in the day. But I think if you can find a way to appreciate the day, appreciate the person, appreciate the opportunities, it changes things. One thing that I found myself telling our kiddos lately and our children or adult children is I'll say, I appreciate you. And my son Jace will say, what, why do you say that? What do you appreciate? I'll say, I appreciate who you are in Christ and how you are using that to make decisions in your life. I tell my daughters that as well. So I think appreciating each other and I tell you, I appreciate you. Even when he does annoying things, <laughs> irritating things, I can get so hung up on that, but I have to step back and say, but I appreciate who you are. I appreciate who you are in our relationship, who God's called you to be, and how you are in to our whole family. So appreciation is a something I think we overlook, and we appreciate a lot of the people here at the church. And that takes us to the Proverbs that we picked for today. Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6, and they are powerful verses. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Uh, can I just do a little bit of my heart? I mean, I'm having a bad day. Can I just be a little bit of my heart? No, it says, trust the Lord with all of your heart and lean not on your own understanding. I mean, I'm pretty smart. No? <laughs> I got a lot to learn, right? Right. And when we're talking about wisdom, that's what Proverbs are. Proverbs, Proverbs are the wisdom literature. And so it's neat because there's just 31 chapters in that. And when we talk about looking at Proverbs over a period of time, I mean, 31 days in a month, that's a perfect. Mm -hmm. Take one a day. And then when you hear Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5, it goes on to verse six, and verse six is what I really love. In all of your ways, acknowledge him. That means everything you do, everything in every given day, acknowledge him, and he will make your paths straight. Sounds simple. Oh boy, 
but it's challenging. There's a lot of challenging things because even on the hard days, mm -hmm. even when there's two paths lying in front of you and you're trying to figure out which is the right path, well, there are some interesting things about these paths because what we have learned is sometimes there's a, a, a very simple understanding the good path and the bad mm -hmm. path. I mean, there's two paths. It's very simple to understand and that clear. God wants us. Yeah, that God wants us to be on this path because it doesn't bring harm to people. And so those kind of paths are easy. But you'll come across some paths that are like, wow, actually both of these paths look pretty good. What is God doing here? And that's exactly what we experienced in our call into ministry. We were living in Fireball, California. Everything was great. Yeah. Our house was actually almost paid off. Our kiddos were doing fine in school. They were involved in activities. We were very involved in the community. I and had think about that cute little church, the yep. Fireball United Min Methodist Church. Definitely a cute little church with amazing families. My career as a high school ag teacher was going well. We had the outstanding department in the state of California. Things were good. And then God gets our attention and says, I need you here. We were doing good. We were serving in the church. We were doing good things for God and, and we everything in our in life community. was in yeah. place. We understood community. That's really where we developed community. And then we get this calling into ministry and we need to uproot and take a three, six and nine year old to move to Wilmore, Kentucky, leaving friends, leaving the community we knew, leaving the church family that we knew, leaving our careers. And that, that was a hard decision. But, we in, but it was because the first part of this verse that we're sharing, we were already there. We were trusting God with all of our heart. Mm -hmm. We weren't leaning on our own understanding. God, why would you call us to this now with a three, six and nine year old? We were trusting that he knew what he was doing. We were truly seeking him. We had been through all four disciple Bible shit <clears throat> studies, which basically was over the course of four years. We had done our homework in our heart, in our soul, in our spiritual life, that we were ready when the paths were put to, to lean on God and to take that leap of faith because it was, it was not easy to do this worldly wise, our Presley nine years old. I remember when we told her we were moving and why we were moving and she said, I will never forget you. I believe the words were, I hate you. And she slammed the bedroom door. And we're supposed to appreciate, okay, God, we are following your will. Everything is gonna be great. So we just want you to understand in that whole opportunity that you have in your life, it, given different points in your life to appreciate, it's not always the circumstances and what's going on you're appreciating, but appreciating who God is. The God has went before you, this is his plan, and that you truly have to be willing to, to take a leap of faith. And it starts with trusting him. And I think there's also that acknowledgement. It's like acknowledging God, you are in this. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> we have stood in place now so many years later and we look back at that and we go, you know, if we had stayed in Fireball, mm. Mendota, United Methodist Church, God would have blessed that. Mm -hmm. God was already blessing that ministry. I mean, we had, were growing incredible ministry, youth ministry and everything else. God would have continued to bless that. But what God did is says, I've got this other opportunity. Mm. <clears throat> it's for you to make a choice. Yeah. Trust me, both of them were great. Yeah. We could have stayed there or we could have gone. And ultimately it was about this, this deeper path where we were trying to seek God in a deeper level. And we knew that we needed some additional schooling. We needed that training. We needed that season to figure out how do you connect in a new community? That was hard, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. to, to come around a new community, but that community in Wilmore, Kentucky was so incredible. We learned something there too as well, that you have to have people that are willing to take chances on people. And that's what they did in Wilmore, Kentucky. They took a chance on some Californians because tell you, when you show up in Kentucky and as a Californian, people are really questioning what you're all about. And so they embraced us, they loved us. Mm -hmm. And the same thing happened when we come back. I mean, there's, there's been those movements that we go, God, okay, why are you moving us now? We're so happy. We're so in love with the people and the community. Why are you doing this? And we have to say, it's not about our understanding. Mm -mm. We don't know why. We have connected at Centenary and it's like, why did you move us here now, God? In the middle of a pandemic, we can't do the things that we love to do mm -hmm. with people. It would have just been easier 
to leave us where we were, yeah. where we already had these relationships and we could continue to love on these people through the midst of a pandemic, but rather God's God says, I want to give you this challenge here. Let's put you in the middle of a pandemic. And I want to show you how community can be built. I would never have thought that you could build community through this, but talking to Dottie and that appreciation mm -hmm. she has for every day, that's what I have come to the conclusion mm -hmm. that we need to appreciate the day each and every day. And that's what it says. Submit some of your will and your way mm -hmm. to God and see what God will do and allow God to, to create this path that maybe you hadn't considered before. And I think we need to remember within that their sacrifices. There are. Our kids were three, six, and nine when we felt God leading us that this was the path He was calling us to. They didn't choose to make sacrifices. Our calling, God's calling on our life to go this path made sacrifices have to happen. And all through the moves and through our schooling, homeschooling, charter schooling, public school, Crazy. I mean, our, this, this kind of our life, and there were sacrifices being made. I remember crying out to God driving in the car one day when we were told we were moving again, and our son had just found an, a, a school that was finally being successful in a school system, and then oh, you up and move us, God? That was hard for me because I was worried about him, but we trusted God. We leaned on his understanding and not ours. And here we are, fast forward to these years later. Is our life perfect? No. Is everything great? No, but we remain, we stay. Yeah. Obedient and faithful. And trusting that God knows what he's doing, even in the midst of a pandemic, and that we cannot gather and worship and meet all of you in a normal way. So appreciate the cheer, 2468, who do we appreciate? That's just fun and makes it sound easy, but it's hard. So I encourage you, are you taking time to appreciate each person in your life? your spouse, your significant other, your children, your parents, and how are you appreciating them? Are you telling them you appreciate them? Are you giving them words of encouragement? Are you doing acts of love and acts of service to appreciate them? Or are you really stuck in, I really appreciate me, these are my needs, my wants, and my wills. And I think especially in a marital situation, if you do not learn to truly appreciate each other for who God has called them to be, to be and knowing there's faults, you've got faults, I've got faults. And that give and take. Mm -hmm. and, and trusting that God is at work in the midst of all of it. Then you can truly appreciate. So our, we have a little challenge for you today. Not just a challenge. It's, this is action. It's like application. There you so go. instead of a question to reflect on or a, or a thought to ponder, yeah you need to get an index card and a marker or a pen and i challenge you to write out proverbs 3 chapter 3 verses 5 and 6 on multiple cards yes. and put those cards everywhere you need to see them or should see them by your bed when you wake up in the bathroom when you're getting ready in your car by the coffee pot at work, at your home office desk, wherever it is. Can you imagine if you continually read that, said that, even if you memorized it, mm -hmm. how that could change your day, especially when everything's falling apart at home. The kids aren't schooling well like they're supposed to, or at Maybe work. Maybe at the homeschooling station, you need to post that <laughs> so that it helps you through it. And you know what? I know there's some kiddos out there that watch this, and yes. I know you all can memorize it because we watch them memorize mm -hmm. some of the scripture there. So I hope that you find that this piece of scripture can encourage you and motivate you and just really help you learn how to appreciate the blessings that are given to you each and every day through people mm -hmm. and through opportunities and through God's amazing yeah. creation, even in the midst of asphalt. This wow. is God's creation. He has not abandoned us and he's not abandoned his creation in this time. So we hope that you find yourself this week appreciating people in a new way, in a, in a very thoughtful way just like we heard from Dottie. So y'all have a great week and do your homework. See we you. appreciate you. See you next TGIF. Bye. Bye.